Good evening, Periscope. My name is Jenny from the blog A Domestic Wildflower. Hi, chick with a camera. Hello, Emily. Hello, King Sebus. Um, I wanted to show you this really delicious looking, um, very slippery and hot and horrible project I'm working on. Um, these are bell peppers that I roasted in the oven under the broiler. Um, if I was really with it, I could have done it with, in the barbecue, but I'm not really with it. And um, so you roast them until the skin is charred and um, black and kind of coming off. And then I put them in a, the old, maybe not old fashioned, but the thing my mom does is she puts them in a brown paper bag, but I put them in a plastic bowl with a lid and then um, wait till they're not super hot and then peel off the skin and, and it's just like horribly sticky and horribly hot and it's totally worth it because, oh, whoops, um, because I'm going to can these in uh, a mixture of lemon juice and vinegar and garlic and salt and that's getting warm on the stove top right now. Um, and yeah, so it turns into like the really yummy kind of roasted peppers that you would love and enjoy um, like in enchiladas or in Mediterranean dishes. It's not distinctly Mexican. Um, it's really delish. And I'm out of the line of the camera to grab my cutting board. I'm going to keep my peppers, my skinned ones, on the cutting board so I can chop them up before I put them into the jars. Um, and if you're just popping on, my name is Jenny and I'm um, blogging at adomesticwildflower.com and I'm peeling slippery, scorching hot skin off of the roasted bell peppers. I'm going to can here in a little bit. Um, and I was hoping if any of you had any canning questions or any questions about, um, what I will be canning this season, I would love to answer some. I don't know everything, but I, um, usually know where to send people to find the answer. Um, that's what it looks like when it's mega skin free. It's part of the skin. The black comes off. Hmm. I hope you periscopers don't mind my really messy kitchen. I've started to think that um, I should probably just not worry about the kitchen because you're probably not on periscope to see a perfect kitchen. You're probably on periscope to see someone with a kitchen that may or may not be as messy as yours canning roasted bell peppers. Do you buy your produce in bulk or do you have a garden? I don't have a garden because um, I would have to have a really tall, really good fence. I live where there's lots of deer. That's a very good question, Chick with the camera. Um, I live where there's lots of deer, and while I have enough room to grow a garden, and I probably have the brain power to do so, I don't have a huge fence. Um, I get my produce from a family friend who does have a big fence, and she lives right down the road, and she grows a huge garden to sell at farmer's markets in my little area of very northern California. And how sweet is this? After farmer's market, she stops by my house with what I have ordered and drops it off at my house. Yes, Lucky. Drops it off for me. And, you know, usually throws in some sunflowers for my little girl. And it's just, it's magic. It is magic. Um, I've read about people, like, joining these things called, like, bountiful baskets and various produce co-ops and I bet that is equally awesome and if I didn't have um, this family friend who happens to live one ridge away um, I would have to probably look into that that is a good question but you're right I'm totally lucky um, they are so like, oh the bountiful basket things I've kind of wondered I've wondered this isn't cheap but I feel like it's worth it because I'm making really good pasta sauce and really good ingredients, you know, like really good roasted peppers. Um, I'm usually pretty conscientious of cost, so that's good to know that they're really expensive. It's terrible, but it's 
those farmers aren't making very much money either, I don't think. So the bell peppers, um, you try and peel off, um, let's see, that's the rib, but you try and peel out some of the seeds if you can. Um, and this time when I did it, I did it a little bit differently than last year. I had um, my husband cut out the top and pull out the guts before I put them in the oven, which turned out to be a smart idea because that pulled out lots of the seeds and um, it kind of saved me some time. Well, I don't know if it saved me time, but it put him to use and it was easier for me, I think. I bought a pressure canner this uh, last couple weeks, uh, Periscopers, and I have um, big plans of canning buck meat here pretty quick. Um, a pressure canner is a steel, or maybe it's, yeah, it's got to be steel, a big metal pot with a lid that locks on and a gauge on the top that measures pressure. And the idea is that you can can things that pretty much anything. You can can almost anything other than pumpkin, I think. Um, you can can meat, seafood, you can can anything because the pressure builds up. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, because you don't leave it in there really long. It's not like crock potting it for two weeks. It's like you get it up to, I can't remember how hot it has to be inside, but really hot to the internal temperature to kill any spoilers. And um, I'm under the impression that you can do meat and do, um, oh my god, that one's hot, um, and you do it up with like tomato paste and garlic, and then it's like ready to eat fajita meat. The peppers aren't marinating, they're just sitting in this bowl getting cool enough for me to handle. That's a good question. I didn't mean to segue out of the pressure canner thing, but hopefully the meat will not be mushy. Um, and the peppers, I just roasted in the oven, it took like 10 minutes under the broiler and I had to turn them over with tongs um, so they would get evenly blistered all over, which, you know, they're not that perfectly even, but that's okay. Um, and then I pulled them out and plopped them in this plastic bowl with a plastic lid. It doesn't have to be plastic, but for some reason it seems like that works pretty well. And um, so they kind of sweat and the skin that's like papery, thin, can you see, slides right off and it's hot and slippery and really messy but I mean, that's, that's the price you pay, I guess. Um, and then, so as soon as I get all this slippery skin off, I have on the, um, in a big pot on my stove, I have a, two cups of vinegar, a cup of olive oil, and a cup of bottled lemon juice and some salt. And I'm gonna bring that to a boil whenever these are done. And then I'll pack these chopped peppers into canning jars that will be boiled and sterilized. Um, and then pour, I'll ladle the hot lemon and vinegar mixture on top and then put the canning lids on and um, water bath can them. I can't remember for how long. I'll have to look at the book, maybe 25 minutes. Does that answer your question? I may not be on Periscope that late. It's getting late. I also have canning. I also have tomatoes on the stove too. I'm an early to bed girl, so this is kind of terrible for me, but that's okay. Those are good questions. Keep them coming, Periscope. You're making the peeling go by a lot faster. Yeah, so they're not really marinating. They're just going to be canned in a mixture of oil and lemon and vinegar and that's what they live in until you open the jar and put them in your enchiladas or put them in lots of things the canning book that i use that i recommend to everybody to buy not because i am affiliated with uh, this book at all but just because it's a very good canning book is canning for a new generation you have a lot of energy huh no i don't i didn't see whose name that was but uh, i don't well, I guess I do maybe have some energy, but I have a lot of enthusiasm, so I guess energy just has to follow. Um, but I really love the canning book, Canning for a New Generation by Liana Krisoff, and I may or may not have said her name was Larissa Krisoff, because Krisoff and S and I think a Tata Larissa, 
And today, hopefully you will laugh at me and not think I'm a total idiot at Periscope, um, I, had to, I sent her a message uh, regarding one of her recipes on Facebook because I just happened upon her book page, which if I were you, I'd like her page if you were there. Um, and I, it doesn't have her first name anywhere, it just has the book title, and I titled the Facebook message, Larissa. Yeah, and then hit send. And now, and then I had to write a, whoops, I'm sorry, I didn't write the correct name message, which is shameful, terrible. I'm an English teacher, I know better than that. I should have checked before I sent the message, but that's life, I guess. I can think of a couple people who might be watching this and be laughing at me, but, oh well. So I'm getting close to being done. What are you canning tomorrow? I will be right over. Uh, Tomorrow is Thursday, and that's back to school night. Thanks for offering, Emily. Um, tomorrow's back to school night, and this weekend is a conference in Chico for um, Google Apps. That's right, school, teaching, my real job, teaching. So I, that, that is why the sense of urgency, I have to can all this stuff, because I won't have time tomorrow, and I have to leave for the weekend. So that's... I'm literally and figuratively burning the midnight oil. So I'm getting close to, not all the way done, but I'm getting close to having all this peeled off. But you can see how this is a really terrible chore. Uh, pretty terrible. And it's really hot in here in this tiny kitchen. But that's okay. This will be totally worth it. It's a very good recipe. If you could stand the sliminess and the heat, I'd recommend it. It's really a good recipe. So if you have just popped on, um, my name is Jenny and I blog at a domesticwildflower.com and you're watching me peel the seeds off of um, roasted red and green bell peppers and um, I'm going to can them in a water bath can canning process, hopefully very soon, um, with lemon, olive oil, and vinegar. You put the recipes on your blog. Um, so the recipes that I, I haven't developed, quote unquote developed, any of the recipes that I've, I haven't developed a recipe all of my own, just of my own imagination. I follow trusted and tried and true recipes and then I might riff on that and share that on my blog. And that's what I intend to do with my tomato sauce and the, um, the bell peppers, those are not my recipes of my invention. They were, they belong to Liana Krisov. Um, and that is why I sent her an ill-addressed message today. Um, and I would presume she would give her blessing and then those recipes will indeed be on my blog, adomesticwildflower.com under the canning section. Good, got it. glad you got it. Um, you could also, if this is uh, something that lights your fire, the canning blog that I love um, that really got me enthused about canning is foodinjars.com. <laughs> and that writer's name is Marissa McClellan, another possible reason why I called up Liana's name. But Marissa McClellan writes a very good blog. Her blog's not like fancy, there's not a lot of bells and whistles, but she writes solid recipes with good, uh, good clear directions. I heard book, one of her books, and I also like her stuff because her batches are not gigantic. She she cans like four pounds of something, not 25 pounds of something. So if you don't have an army of, you know, 25 people to feed, or you have a small kitchen, or not a lot of time, all of those things apply to me, then her recipes are a good fit. So foodinjars.com is a good one. I really like. Excellent questions, chick with a camera, or girl with a camera. Um, what else can I share with my patient viewers? Okay, we're almost done. We really have only three left. Is there anything else that I can answer for you, Periscopers? What size jars do you use? Um, good question. Um, because I don't have a, an army to feed, and by that I mean whenever I open a jar of anything I've canned, it's like me and two small children 
probably going to nibble on it. So I don't, I don't use big quart jars. Quarts are four cups, four measuring cups. I very rarely can in those big jars, only because I don't want my hard work to go bad in the refrigerator waiting to be eaten. So I tend to use smaller size jars. Um, these are nice if they're in a wide mouth, um, one measuring cup, that's a half pint jar. That's what I have um, for, for these. And um, yeah, most things I really like, I like a pint, that's two measuring cups, or even a, or a half pint. And I even have teeny tiny, teeny tiny, I can't remember how many ounces, very few ounces jelly jars that I have done um, like tiny uh, marinated onions, like a whole pearl onion. I did those, God, they're probably up in the cupboard. If my hands weren't filthy, I would dig them out. But I use pretty small jars. But you certainly could can almost anything in big jars. Just you have to think about if you want that in your fridge. But that's a good question. Okay, we're getting to the end here. Um, did the onions turn out good? They did, and I shared them with um, a gal I work with uh, who likes sophisticated talk cocktails, um, and I also work with her. And she liked them in a Gibson uh, martini, and they were also good like in beef stew. And that recipe is also in Liana Chrysos' book in the spring section. And in that recipe book, I remember it recommended trying them in a Tory kebab, I think. Um, and that was a cube of ham, a cube of cheddar, and the onion, like on a toothpick. Um, like as a pub snack if we were in uh, Great Britain. And I never tried that like that, but I bet they would be good. They were tasty. And they looked pretty in little jars. It was like a cute thing for me to give as a gift which I presume I will blog about this Christmas season. I'm trying to remember if they're up in my cupboard right now, if I should even look, but I did have a couple jars left. They were good. And I got the little spring onions, kind of in the springtime, but I'm sure Rayleigh's has them all the time, in the summer anyway, uh, from Rayleigh's. And they came in a sack. It's hot in my kitchen, wild, uh, periscopers, wildflowers. Okay, getting close to being done. Are there any other questions that I could answer for you? Any of you who are just popping in? You faithful viewers. Okay. Sometimes the skin is not sufficiently scorched to peel off, and I have worried about if that was going to be really a problem when I go to eat them. And it's not. I'm not a picky person, but I still don't think it would be like a deal breaker. Like, ooh, this is a bad bell pepper. No. It was just, you know, sometimes you can't quite get all the skin off. Like this one still looks pretty uh, not scorched. God, that light is terrible. I need to get new light bulbs or something in my kitchen. Okay, last one. Ooh, and see, this one is really scorched. Like, ooh, really, really. Okay. Peeling this off. But I thank you, uh, Periscopers, for following along. Um, I'll sign off, and if my kids are still in the tub, when I get to the part where I put these in the jars, I will sign back on. But if not, then it will have to reconvene another evening. But, um, ooh, yeah, this is really wet. Hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Chick with the Camera. And thank you, everyone else who shared a little love with the hearts and the good questions. I appreciate it. And um, hopefully, I'll be able to pop on again soon. If not this evening, then it will definitely be... Oh, you purple hearts and you green hearts. You're so sweet. Uh, it'll be uh, next week. But um, have a good evening, Periscope.